Well, hi everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm going to um, see if I can start doing videos on a regular basis about my thought process on the glazing using the Amico glazes and the way that I've been layering them. And the few that I've really found that I've had real success with and how um, my brain works at trying to evolve into getting some extra glaze, glazes using the layering that I feel um, make my business stand out and what I do stand out and gives me satisfaction. So um, you, uh, a good few of you, have you seen me throw this pot, uh, this bowl, um, it came out really well. Um, and what I've done with this firing is I've got six bowls all with chattering on um, and I want to try and see if I, because chattering to me stands out beautifully using the celadons. So I'm trying to look at what I can do with this to keep the chattering standing out, but then have the impact of the inside of the bowls. So um, I just want to go through with you a few uh, of my thoughts. What I'm doing is I've got a, a little block of wood here. And as I work, I'm going to have the, uh, the glaze that I'm using sat here. So at the time, um, when you're trying to, if you do take the time and you want to watch what I'm doing, you know what I'm using. Um, and I'm going to run through um, what I've already done so far. I've done the base layers. I've got a lot of the bowls. Um, I haven't done this one yet because I'm still in the thought process of whether to do um, uh, something a little bit new. Um, now, let me sort of recap with you uh, the, the two glazes that I feel so far that I have got a good success with is um, this one. Now, there was questions on the Amico website the other day about what do we think um, works, how often do we go to the little Facebook page for our inspiration, and I have to say, really, that's where I go all the time. And um, I've got the habit, if I get a new clay, like for example, I've just bought uh, the fire brick, uh, the deep fire brick glaze, I haven't used it yet and so really my thought process would be let's go and have a look on on the amico site see what goes with what and actually that is what is stimulating me to buy the next glaze for the next trial but i just want to go through um with you this this one here um, that came out of the kiln um last time you would have seen it but I think that this now has reached um, a really good finish and has it has got what what I want um, from a um, from a glaze um, and you know we're each to our own of course. But I just want to recap that what I've used on the outside of here is the rainforest celadon on chattering, and to me it really really uh, one feels beautifully, but it actually uh, gives us a lovely finish with the um, the chattering. I've this time done the base because I now feel comfortable that the celadons are not going to run. Um, and this is the one inside that I call my Midnight Skies Glaze. And, and they're, they're all very different. This one in this case I did, I've, I've all, always done the obsidian as the base layer. I have uh, in this case kept it very thick. I've done four layers on that part of the base because I really wanted that to be really, really a solid black. And then I've put Smoky Merlot and the oatmeal um, on it in the thick band, which has caused this beautiful movement um, in, the, in the glaze and for the blue to be there. Now to show you this being used a few other times and uh, without the uh, rainforest, um, this was a uh, one of the goblets I did last year. And, and you can see why I call it Midnight Skies. It just looks like a, 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 um, a bank of mountains and the, you know the sky is inside inside and then this one as well another goblet that I've done um, so I'm really feeling now that I have mastered that glaze and that to me is uh, a success so then the next sort of glaze that I feel has been a success but I haven't quite got it right yet I'm still um, looking at which way round to do um, the pieces is using the ancient copper and the textured turquoise now i'm getting really nice crystals um, that crops up a lot on the amico site for me it's about um, 
getting that temperature, having this in the hottest part of the kiln. Um, I'm, I'm firing in a scut um, 1018, KTM 1018, and I am getting cone six, but I'm actually, I think the, 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 um, the cone is sitting over, touching. So there is a question mark whether that's pushing a little bit higher than a cone six, but I'm then putting my buns in at the end and I'm doing um, a slow cool down that way by just slowing it down a bit. Um, and I'm getting, um, this was the first one I did, and this was fired actually in a, in a community kiln. Um, and it is actually very, it is quite different. I like that. That in lots of ways has some nice gr um, greens in it. And then um, this one, um, again, is really lovely. Now, the, the question mark for me, is it textured turquoise over copper? or copper over to textured turquoise. And um, I did a, uh, I've did been doing a speeded video that I did a time lapse yesterday, but I've got two lamps that I'm doing at the moment. And um, this is the, is the copper and the textured turquoise. In this case, textured turquoise over the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a band of oatmeal about an inch wide, a bit higher up so it moves everything down. So that is where I'm at with that. So if you have a look at um, this one, this one is textured turquoise over the copper. This one is the copper over the textured turquoise with a thin band of oatmeal with the movement there. Now, out of the two, I like that one. And that's the same with this one. So I'm feeling I'm getting there with that one. And uh, it sort of led me to think that I want to do something with the texture, to, with, the, with the copper, ancient copper and textured turquoise with the big bowl. But I think what I'm thinking of doing is now going to add a bit of blue into it and see if I might even do, because one of the other ones that I really love at the moment is um, the way the storm um, celadon has worked it's a beautiful color um, and i'm thinking of using the storm outside as my celadon and then a band of copper around the top and then blues running on the inside haven't quite got a plan yet for that one um, but that's where we're at so yeah so let's just give you an update enough what i thought was is i'm going to start um, painting these on the bits where i'm just painting them i'll just i'll just speed up the the process with the camera um, and then talk in between. So this is one of the bowls that I prepared yesterday. It's had three layers of, she says, having to think, um, textured amber brown. Now, this is, a, this is a new trial to, for me. I've done textured amber brown with a layer of um, 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 iron luster over the top. Now, if I show you that, you've seen this one come out of the kiln. So this is um, the um, guess what? It's right in front of us. Right. So the textured amber brown is on here, and then the iron luster I did, and then this has had a bit of oatmeal at the top. But the this has been very successful at, at showing the, the cuts through or the chattering through. So that's what I've done on this one. But on the Amico site the other day, um, no, it wasn't actually, it was on one of the YouTube channels. Um, so it's totally different. But um, I saw seaweed being used on top of the textured amber brown. And I've decided to just do this as three layers of textured amber brown with a really thick band of seaweed on the inside. I may then put a very thin band of oatmeal just to get some movement, but leave the middle so that it's textured amber brown in the middle. So that is what we're going to do first. So let's put, I've got the seaweed here. And um, I will... question I don't know if anybody wants to answer me this I've tried the plastic 
I've tried it without the plastic because the plastic to me just doesn't work. And I'm just wondering what everybody else does with their, um, their jars when they um, get a bit stuck up like this. Because I've used this for a while. My hands are getting old. Right, let's, there we go, we got it. We got it, we got it, we got it. So I did think about getting mason jars for them or some other jars, but I just thought that's a shame. I absolutely love the fact that my glazes are all on the shelves and they look really nice in their existing bottles. What I do do is just wipe round, get rid of all the clunky bits before I use um, it on the bowls. Then I, have, I keep a clean water, a dirty water and a clean water for my brushes. Um, so run that like way too much. That's the sort of thing I've done. I'm just going to sit that over to one side now and wherever it runs, it runs. And then I will put a bit more in a second. So that's one of the bowls that I've done. I want to sort of just show you where we're at so far. Let's see. And the seaweed. Now, as we all know, seaweed is a little bit excitable. Uh, I might put a little bit in my lid. It's a bit runnier. Yeah. Get that all bottom up in the. I want to make sure there is enough glaze to have nice reaction on the bowl. Okay. Okay, so you can see I've just done another wave of of and um you can sort of see where it's running into. Let's put a bit more on this bit here. So that's that by that, and we'll let that dry. See what that does. So this is drying now, and I realised actually after um, looking at my glazes that actually what I wanted to use. Um, um, I've used seaweed, but what I actually wanted to use was Emerald Falls. There was a big discussion about, it was a test that one of the guys did on Emerald Falls and he, he used it in one of his own glazes that was very much like um, uh, textured amber brown and he got a lovely response and I've now gone and put on here seaweed. Well that's fine, what we'll do is we'll do a thick layer of Emerald Falls um, at the top now, I think. And then I might even do a top layer around the rim of blue stone because blue stone is a very interesting one that I've not really mastered. I have a um, an interesting reaction with blue stone um, when you've got cutouts. So let's put a little bit more. On this one, oh, now we're going to use the Emerald Falls. Now, the Emerald Falls, again, I think is a new one for me. I've not... Oh, I have had it open. Good, that's good news. Let's give that a shake. By the name, I should suggest Falls means it moves. Because it's very watery, this one. Um, I'm going to use my big Chinese brush. Now I'll do a
there. So we've got some movement, not enough there, let's give it a bit of Okay, so you can see that's looking good. And put that up to dry. Right, a different day. And let the stuff all um, have a good dry. As I said, I'm going to, um, with this one now, put blue stone around the rim, but I'm actually gonna put it around the outside of the rim. And I might then put on a very thin layer of, of oatmeal. Why not? That's all we can say. That's what testing is about, isn't it? So I'm giving it a shook. I'm going to put that up there so you guys know what I'm doing. Put it in the lid. Put it there. And um, I'm going to put this on with a um, fan brush, I think. Can you find a fan brush? It's a fan brush. Got a few little flicks going so that it will add some interest. dry and all we can do then is put a bit of we either make the decision to use iron luster or oatmeal and as I said the process is a difficult one what do you do or do we just see what happens with that run like it is I'll show you that one Right, so this now, if you remember, has had the seaweed, emerald falls, a textured amber brown on top of the, um, no, sorry, um, blue stone on top of the textured amber brown. So I'm just going to give this um, another little bit of shape, this actually, the, um, the blue stone on the rim. Because what's interesting with that is we will see this on the outside where it's not been interfered, if interfered with, but it is just on the text number brown, which it is here, but there is obviously the overlaps. Um, and then this this debate isn't there. Do I do do I do oatmeal? Okay, so I have decided that I am going to put oatmeal around the rim um, so we can just see what reaction we get with the, um, the glazes. I don't know whether to put it around the rim or just put it in blobs. I think I might do a very thick rim. A lot of questions on Amico about how gloopy or do you need to dilute oatmeal? And the answer to the question is no. I did, I was one of those people that did that the first time round, but I haven't, um, I use it like this. So I'm just doing a thick, thick band, and then it doesn't matter what way it runs. do is I'm just going to make areas of thicker bits on so every now and again there is 
is a running lump. And I am going to do thick. I probably should show you how thick I'm putting that on there. Let me see. Oh, let's see if I can drop down easily. Probably can't. So I'll just show you how, oh, she says try to get on a seat, how thick I'm going to sort of leave this and see how, I don't know if my hand's in the way. All we can do is see what happens. Uh, quite interesting to see. Um, yeah, so I've left that. So that will, that's quite an overhang, maybe too much. Okay, it's gonna crack. I've never had oatmeal, not when I've done this, not sort of crack and pull away. But I'm also always very delicate with it. And I have, as you can see, had some great results when I've put it on like this. So um, we'll see where that takes us. So I'm really excited to uh, share with you how the this pot came out. Um, I'm over the moon with the results. Ultimately, I may have not put so much of the oatmeal on the outside. Um, it has run halfway down the bowl, but I'm sure you'll see from the photographs shortly and the angle of the video that actually it was well worth doing. But look at the inside of that. Now, we're talking about go-to glazes and things that you would be happy to repeat. Well, I definitely would be very happy to repeat this. I think the blue stone actually is a marvel in this. It's absolutely beautiful. I love how the blue stone has ended up really securing the rim on the square rim. Um, as you can see there, um, and I'm really looking forward to doing this on a bigger bowl. This bowl is about 20 centimetres across. It's called really a small fruit bowl, um, and um, yeah, uh, it will be really good to do it across into the large fruit bowls where you've actually got like your 30 centimetre plus um, in us. But yeah, just look how rich and vibrant the colours are there. So over the moon, that was done again uh, to repeat on a cone six um, medium fire um, but when we did get the um, uh, the cones out as I'm sure you've seen on that video if you've watched it we did believe we got a good cone seven uh, but look at that there it there is the um, outside upside down and how that blue stone has actually run um, down with the oatmeal on it and you've got that beautiful blue texture running through onto the chattering so um, yeah absolutely brilliant um, very pleased and um, it was a win-win really uh, worth the, the consideration and the layers and working out what to do um, but thank you very much everybody for watching and staying with me I hope it has been worth your while um, just to try and uh, work with me and see my thought process when I'm trying to do glazing um, and I'm you know as I keep saying I'm really enjoying this and uh, love sharing time with everybody so thank you very much